Hey guys, welcome to another session where we are learning Java for testers. And uh, this is a part two for getters and setters along with this keyword. So in the previous session, we just discussed about what is getters and setters and how to create them. And in this, I'm gonna talk about one more example where we will see how efficiently and what is the actual purpose or what is the practical meaning of using getters and setters. So let's jump back to our previous example where we created getter and setter public methods and try to access you know the public public methods from the another class so we already created an object bmw using which we are trying to set color and then we are trying to access we are trying to get the value of that particular variable using a get color method now practically speaking why we need getters and setters so one good example I can tell you is we can create a lot of variables in the car class and if we make all of them public the risk of exposing all the variables to an outside world becomes very high so basically we do not have any control on what value someone can set to this variables because they are public right so to another alternate way for restricting an access but still providing an access is using getters and setters so what I mean to say is, even though I created these variables as private, which means these variables will not be accessible to an outside world, even though they create an object like we have created BMW, but they are still able to access them and using how using getters and setters. So this is this is a concept related to encaps encapsulation. So in Java, you would have heard in an object oriented programming, there are various behaviors or we call it as object oriented programming concept in which encapsulation is one of the concept in which we are encapsulating these variables in this particular class so that outside world will not able to access them directly but they will able to use them using getters and setters right so we are protecting how they can use these variables another example is or another usage of using getters and setters is Whenever someone is trying to set a value to a particular variable, we can apply a validation on it. Like, are they setting correct value? Is it an acceptable value or they are trying to messing it up by providing any, you know, random string or a null value or anything like that. So how to do that? Let's, let's create an, another getter and setter and we'll try to, uh, uh, we'll try to see an example where how we can restrict or how we can apply and validation using uh, getters and setters so for example now in the previous session we also saw like we have created getters and setters methods uh, manually by writing a public methods and also automatically using eclipse or uh, eclipse uh, automated way of creating getters and setters right right click go to the source and then you will see under source mm. Okay, this is the source and then here you can see getters and setters, right? So it automatically generated getters and setter method for the rest of the private variable. Now let's see, I have private int year because it's private. I will not able to directly access this particular variable even though I created an object of that class, right? So let's say BMW dot. So the moment I use BMW dot, ideally all the public entities or other methods or variables I should able to see them here but I will not able to see them right because I can only see public like all this get color get get year right set because they are all public that's why I'm able to see them or I'll able to access them but not a but not a year variable because it's not public so let's let's make it public and see if I'll able to access it okay so here what I'm doing is I'm making public save it now once again come back to another class which is under the same package remember bmw dot now if you see i have a variable which i can access which is year right equal to let's say i'll try to set it as 1987 because it's int i can set it see i am able to access the year variable using this particular reference or object and i can set a value let's try to print that 
I'm directly setting. Okay. I'm not using a set method and instead of get color. Now what I can use is get year, right? BMW dot. I'll show you two ways directly printing the value here. This is the one way. Fine. And we will also try to print using get. So instead of directly printing the variable value dot, just type dot and type initial characters of the method and you will see everything available in the drop down, whatever you can access or whatever you are allowed to use, save it. Now here I'm trying to print both of them, right? So let's run this program. I'm going to this particular thing. I'll comment it. So how to comment quickly control forward slash. Okay. And save it in the same way. You can uncomment, just select whatever you want to uncomment and then again, control and forward slash key or run this particular program run as Java application. See in both in both the cases, it printed exactly the same value. So here I'm trying to access the variable directly and here using a get year method. So what is the difference? Basically, we are setting it up directly because it's a public variable. That's why in both the cases, I'll use the same value. Now, what difference will it make the moment I turn this particular access modifier as private. Now I'll get an error in another class where I'm trying to access this variable. See, it's showing me error, right? You can see the red mark and the moment I hover my mouse, it shows me some reason. So I know this, this statement now will not be valid because the year variable is no more public. That's why I'm not able to access it from the outside world or from the outside class, even though I create a reference which means even though I create an object, I'll not able to access it. Okay. This, this is an encapsulation. I'm protecting my variable access from the outside world. And I'm saying, okay, if you want to use the variable in the car class, you cannot use it directly, but use a get or a set methods so that you have an alternate ways to access those variable. Right now, this particular statement will not work. Now, how to set a value. You know that how to do that BMW dot set year, right? Now I can pass the value again, 1956, let's say, save it. And now if I run this, now it should able to print 1956. See, because it is setting it up over here and it is getting here. Now, another thing that what, what, I said initially is using getters and setters. You have control on what other people are trying to set the value. So let's say using a get year method, basically here I'm setting the value, right? No, sorry, set year. There is a set year, set year. So I can apply validation. Basically I can control what the other person is trying to set the value and how I can do that is. So let's say I'm here applying a value if condition, if so whatever person is trying to set year is greater than 1500, right? Then only do this particular assignment of setting it up fine. Otherwise else. So in Java, if else statement is basically, if the condition is true, this is the condition. If this condition is true, go inside this, this particular highlighted blue mark. So it will execute or the cursor during execution will enter this block only if this condition is true and it will set the value, right? And else, else means if the condition, this condition doesn't meet or this is false, it will cause to the else block. Now go to the else block and here I can say CSO control space just to, you know, print. I'm saying. I'm printing some error message here and saying this is not valid input. Please enter year greater than 1500, right? So this is just an error message or this is just a message to the user. If he tries to set the year less than 1500, right? So let's see how it works. Now in this scenario, Again, 
instead of setting it up 1956 i'll try to set 1400 so ideally in this case which this particular 1400 is less than the condition so this is not gonna set this so let's see what will happen okay now again i'm trying to run this program see so it says it it went to an else block and from that it printed this string saying this is not a valid input please enter year greater than 1500 and it printed the default value of a year which is zero here right it printed the default now so basically by using this getters and setters i'm having a control saying like okay you can access my private variable using this but there are some restrictions to it or there are some conditions only if you satisfy them i'm gonna give you an access or i'm gonna set the value which you want to set in my variable right this is the one use usage or one advantage of using this now let's see another example now we already created one object which or a reference which helps us to access the variable or method in the car class right now let's create an another object so instead of bmw now i'll let's say create toyota this is just an another object and how to create that we already know that name of a class first it's a syntax then the reference or an object name equal to new name of the class for which we are creating right so we created an another object called let's say toyota now this is this is gonna be an interesting learning for you see what i'm doing here i am using exactly same variable but here i'm setting it up using another reference or another object so let's say here instead of 1400 what i'll do is okay let it be 1400 and here i'll set it to 1990 fine now you tell me what it will print here and what it will print here so try to understand here i'm setting the same variable using another object and here again i'm setting the same variable but this time in another object so now you should understand that whenever it will come here in the if block and it will try to set the value of the private variable this keyword plays an important role in this case so basically this keyword now understand which instance of an object is referring to to set this value and this con this particular keyword controls the setting up and giving you the giving you the value of that particular variable when you are retrieving it so let me let me run this so that you will understand it clearly in this there is a bmw object which is trying to set the value and another is a toyota so let's run this and see what value it prints okay so in the first case because this value is less than 1400 it is not even it is not even entered in your you know if block so it's not able to set the value that's why it printed the error and then default value but in the next case if condition satisfies and that's the reason it entered the if condition and it's set the value and in, whenever we are getting that it's giving you a correct value now let's try to give both the value as valid so here i am giving 2050 and an interesting part i'll print this before setting and after setting I just want you to understand whether it retains the previous value set by BMW instance or not. Okay, so try try to understand what I'm what I'm doing here because these are the basic concepts. And if you are if you are clear in this, then your programming will be very concrete. Now here I'm setting up using a BMW object, a same variable with the value 2050, printing it here. So obviously I'll expect to print 2050. Now I'm created another object of, for a same class. And here again, I'm trying to get the value of that particular variable, you know, using a Toyota object. Now here in this case, will it print 2050 because it's already been set by another instance or it will print something else. Let's see this. Now I'm setting it up 1990 and then again printing it. So now let's see for these three print statements, what are the different values this 
application is gonna print for us okay let's run this interesting see the first print is as expected because it correctly set the value and it correctly retrieved that value and it printed it but what about the next print statement why it printed me a zero and why not 2050 which has been already set you know this is this is what you should understand the toyota instance has not set any value before getting it that's why it printed the default which is zero it it's not gonna retain the previous value set by bmw instance because that's a different object that's a different object that's why it, this statement right this statement plays an important role here because it is setting it up value only for the calling instance and that is a bmw that is the object which is calling and asking him to set the value of the variable and that's the reason it's it's setting it up only for that object and when you are trying to retrieve it over here what's happening is this particular toyota object we are not even set it up and we are trying to retrieve it so of course it's going to give you a default which is zero but in the line number 20 here we are setting up the value and then retrieving it right so here it's correctly giving me a 1990 so, so this is one a very good advantage and a usage of getters and setters so getters and setters are nothing but a very simple public methods don't go by their name and think like they are tricky methods they are pretty much same like in any public methods but the only way is because of the naming conventions we use them how to set it up and how to get the value okay so yeah this is this is uh, what i need to tell you about getters and setters and uh, yeah uh, let's see some more concept in the next video. So see you in the next video. Thank you guys